Hey guys, this is Tim Shepard with the Vintage Airstream Podcast, and uh, like we talked on a few of the shows ago about the uh, Go Power flexible panels I put on about four and a half years ago. About last year, they kind of stopped putting out uh, any reasonable amount of power. So I contacted Go Power, and um, they're under warranty for five years. So uh, they said there was a bad batch or something that the um, uh, manufacturer changed the coating without telling them so they they kind of got a little bit of uh, opaque on the top and stopped I'll, I'll throw some pictures up so you can see but they went in and sent me this uh, the GP flex 500 kit uh, looks like this in the box so if I switch this so here's the box no power 500 it has I think five panels and it has a uh, M P. What is it? MPPT uh, controller, as opposed to the uh, the other one I had. And so we'll be putting this in. So I will have to. Um, remove the four panels that are up there. I'm not sure if I can fit all five of these on. Well, I'll see. Um, and I have to rewire it because I think with this kit you have to put them in uh, series to up the voltage for the MPPT controller. And um, so there will be rewiring to do. The problem is going to be pulling those off. I mean I put them on to stay on. I used uh, 3M VHB tape and then I sealed around them also. Um, so it's going to be fun to pull those off. But I'm going to open up the box here and uh, we'll scan through it and see what's in there. Alright, so I got the box open. Again, this is the uh, Go Power GP Flex 500 kit. So in there, you get five of these panels. They're all individually boxed. Thin little boxes. Um, they are 100 watt panels. Um, they seem a little, I don't know, they're thicker than the old ones. Bigger not mounting holes. I'll be using the HP tape again though. Um, I know when you put them on, you should leave a gap. You shouldn't butt them right up against each other because they'll tend to expand. So, I just hope the uh, coating is better. Um, and also in the kit, with this other big box. So you get some battery leads, heavy duty battery cables. You get a 80 amp uh, breaker, DC breaker, that's nice. You get a solar cutoff switch, so you can turn the solar coming off. Jumper cables so you can jump these together. The panels themselves have these ends on it, so you just configure it uh, in series, I suppose. With these jumpers. You get, this is kind of new uh, cable entry kit. So you would, I guess, you could drill holes in the top of your trailer and then seal this. Kit and then this would run down to the controller. I'm not going to be using this because I already have my cable run. And I'll show you how I did that. I ran it through the air conditioning vent and I have some pass throughs there. Of course, you got the instructions. Oh, this is that switch, the cutoff switch I already took out. This is the 40 amp MPP controller. Got heavy duty connections on it. It's metal, it's pretty heavy. And this is kind of nice because you have this remote panel. So you can mount this somewhere and see how it feels. So this connects, I guess, with the SCAT5 cable that was in the box. Um, I don't have it right over the instructions yet, but um, this, will help, this will be how you can view uh, what your solar system is doing. So it's kind of a nice upgrade over the last one. Um, you can check out my videos on uh, 
blog.deft.com look up solar and you can see how the original install went. So it's uh, pretty much a complete kit. Anyway, I will get up there and uh, start pulling off the old panels. Alright, here we are up on the roof of the trailer. Um, let me flip the camera around. Okay, so I'm up on top of my airstream. I already started pulling the uh, aluminum tape away. <clears throat> Here's how I put the cables into my airstream. I put these uh, pass-throughs. I think they're blue. I can't remember. Blue ox or something. I'll link to them somewhere. Or they're on the blog. Not about that. Um, go on and search for solar. So we have the two panels up there. They're cabled up along here. Everything is just parallel wire here and then going down. There's the original panel connections. And you can see how kind of faded the the panels go. Um, so yeah, the, little, the newer ones seem a little better connection on there. So that'll be, <coughs> that'll be interesting. So I'm just gonna start pulling this stuff away and uh, I'm gonna disconnect the cables that are going down inside. I have already turned off the breaker that these go to, which is was my disconnect. Um, the kit came with another disconnect, which I'll be using when we get to that. But the goal today is just to pull these four panels off and make sure the DC wiring is safe to work with. So here we go. Okay, this seems to be about the best way because there's Sika flux on the ends, edges, and um, BHB tape underneath. So I'm just taking this. Being very careful because it'll scratch, but I mean, it's the rough, so um, and I'm just kind of working it like this. It's not super easy. But I tried to pry it up just by getting one edge and Panel started breaking, which you know these are going to be thrown out anyways. Um, so I'm not too worried. So anyway, uh, it's a little bit of a struggle. Okay, so. Here we go, it's coming. All right, I will we'll keep going. All right, so if you get two sides off, short and long, you can pretty much pull it the rest of the way. That's okay. They weren't usable when they were on. So here's what you're left with. I don't know how much effort I'm going to take into trying to clean all that. Probably not much. Probably just where the new tape's going to go. I'll get up here and clean it with soap and water and then use some isopropyl alcohol. So, not too bad using the metal. I tried a plastic cutting knife have enough cutting power. So metal one's working pretty well. So two down, two to go. Now I have five panels. I'm just eyeballing here. Maybe I could put three back there in the back where those two are now and just put them the other way. So I'll just turn them 90 degrees. Uh, maybe I can uh, put three there. I don't know. I'll have to see how these what this panel size is compared to the other ones. But if you look in the middle between the two, there's like a, I don't know, three inch gap or something. You need that for expansion, so you can't really butt them right up against each other. So don't forget that if you're doing it. So, all right, get back to it. 
All right, here we are back with the new panel. So what I did, I took some isopropyl alcohol and I just uh, wet it on here and I just went around the edges where the tape's gonna go. Um, I'm using this uh, 3M VHB tape, got it from Amazon. It's a uh, half inch by five yards. So just gonna preset it here around the entire perimeter here. And then once I get it in position on the trailer, I'll take uh, take it off and I'll use this J roller and I'll go around the panel like that. You know, the other side once it's up there. So that's basically how it's held on with this 3M VHB tape. And then I'll probably do like I did last time, I'll go around with some it's Sika Flex, or you probably could just use Volcom or whatever, and just go around the edge just to keep the water out of here underneath. Um, but yeah, I mean, you saw how hard they were to come off, so it held it on pretty good. They were up there for four and a half years. So, anyway, I'm gonna keep at it. It's a windy day to mess with panels, but okay, so here's the first one in place. I pulled the double sticky tape second side off, kind of laid it in place, and then I just hit it with the roller like this. Not too hot up here, but uh, seems to be enough to let this thing mold in place. Uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to do holding the camera, but basically, yeah, uh, that's it. Then I'll go around the edges with some Sika Flex or Volcom or whatever I got. Uh, one thing is you should probably take a picture of your serial number here on each of your panels and store that away somewhere because they'll need that in the event of a warranty issue and in five years or three or four years that might be pretty hard to read so take a picture of each of those write them down somewhere st store them up plus if you have an issue you want to climb up here here's the wind bigger amount. So anyway, there you go. One down. Uh, where to go? Okay, here we go. So we've got the three down in the back. I'm sitting on the two in the front. Um, so they're wired in series because of the MPPT controller. I talked about that earlier. And what that does is it brings the voltage up um, so you don't have to have like a super huge wire to get the current down uh, and then the, the controller can put out all the current when it gets there so um, again i already had my input and uh, i'm going to still use that and it has plus and minus so here's the plus connector So this is going to be uh, plus going in to here. So those two are made up. I'm going to disconnect inside first before I do that. So it goes uh, plus here, and then the minus one connects to the plus of this panel I'm sitting on. And then I use their jumper because they give you, I think, four jumpers. plus down there if you can see it okay and then the minus from that panel goes to the plus of the middle panel and the minus of that panel goes to the plus of the end and then I use um, two jumpers to bring the minus back three jumpers so this is the minus of the last cable and this is so this is the negative so it should go to this one so you can see that all made up um, the positive has a red one so that'll mate into there which is the black on the right so anyway I'm gonna go inside and disconnect the other side of that because that's gonna go to the MPPT controller 
and uh, I just want to make sure it's all disconnected because these are because they're solar panels they're putting out power right now so I'm going to hook my meter up my volt meter up to that and see so I'm just going to come back and use the aluminum tape like I did before to hold down the cable I thought I had some C complex or Volcom but everything I had was dried out you know how that goes um, so I'm going to go get some more and then I'll come back and I'll pop those edges so that's what we're doing for today um, I'll wait and post this all when it's done so anyway I think I made pretty good progress for today talk to you soon Okay, I said I would check it with my meter. So these are what's coming from the panels right now. 97.7 <laughs> volts. That will give you a little shock probably. So I will be here. All right, here we are continuing the video. New day, about a week later since I got the panels um, installed. So I worked on some of the wiring uh, and I uh, thought we'd go ahead and go over that next. So here we go. Not know where to look. I'm supposed to look over here. Okay. So here we are inside the ambassador. Big mess. <laughs> Work day. Uh, you probably remember my control stuff is in here. This is the trimetric. Tells you how much uh, voltage and current. It's so got eight amps coming in, but that's I also have the charger plugged in. <clears throat> it's a cloudy day, so we'll do we'll do a test later. You can see it's pretty cloudy. I did get about six amps in from the panels just messing with it um, so let's go over what's happening the cables are coming in from the roof and then they're going into the solar disconnect so that's the new one of the new pieces there so the two cables come directly from the roof they go into the disconnect and then they come out of the disconnect and they go into the 40 amp MPPT controller and from the from that controller uh, the bottom there it comes out and it goes to the new breaker all these pieces came in so here's the solar charging breaker 80 amps and then that of course goes to the battery bank I have two 105 amp AGMs so there's one of them and there's the other of course, you know, when you do your trailer, it's not going to look <laughs> nearly like this because mine's kind of a test bed. I mean, I this is the third solar controller that I've actually installed to test for you guys. First one was the, the one that came with the original GoPower. Um, we had all the controller or charging stuff into this unit here, whereas this one has a separate display. I'll show you in a minute. So this is the first one. Then I had to rip that out and rewire. I wired in this one. This was the trimetric uh, 2025, uh, 2030. Excuse me, 2030. So it, it had the uh, the nice thing about this one is it had a cable when it actually talked to the trimetric there in the closet. So you yeah, could see the charging input current from the solar right there in the uh, my original cap in there that I showed you um, so anyway uh, power comes in solar disconnect <clears throat> goes to the 40 amp charger comes over and goes to the solar breaker DC breaker and then finally to the batteries <clears throat> for charging and then in the closet here I replace the this is where I mounted the original uh, panel charge panel just the, the reason I did is because this one actually had to have the DC wires go into it and it needed to be next right next to the um, battery so this new one just uses a cat5 I'm gonna go back around and show you I'm gonna make you guys dizzy this new one just uses the cat5 cable which is kind of nice a lot easier wiring too, so they don't have all the power wires going to it. So you have this Cat5 wire; it goes to the back of the uh, this remote panel. So they could be remoted across, but I I don't have any cable going all the way around. So I'm just gonna leave mine here. I put this light here because the other one didn't have a backlit, but this one does, so it's kind of nice. 
So if you touch it, so you can see they got 14 and a half volts. And it's also probably coming from my charger. It's plugged in. So I still have one and a half half amps coming in from the solar. It's on boost mode. Um, and they're 100 amp or 100 percent. And you can see there is the AGM. There's some dip switches that you set on the controller there for the type of battery, flooded or AGM. Um, the boost mode is where you can make it charge extra for like an hour, I think, um, if you need to. But um, anyway, the battery's fully charged anyway. So I guess what's coming in, it's just because I have lights on and stuff. So there you have it. We'll do some testing. We'll do some testing and um, we'll see uh, how much power I can get out of it. We'll wait till it's sunny. And what I'll do is uh, to test it, what I usually do is I just turn on the inverter. If you didn't recall, I have a uh, inverter down there. It's also a go power. Uh, I can't really see it. I think it's a 1500 watt to run the uh, microwave when we're traveling. Okay, so there you go. Again, uh, mine's uh, messy because it's really kind of a, a lab for you guys. So anyway, all right. Um, on a sunny day tomorrow, hopefully, I'll get up there and uh, let me flip the camera up. So tomorrow hopefully it'll be sunny and I'll get up there and I'll use the Sika Flex that came in and I'll um, go ahead and do the edges of the panels. Um, I'm going to use my aluminum tape to tape down the cables just like I did before. That worked out well. And then I got to pull the cellophane off the top of the panels. Um, and then if it, when it's sunny, hopefully it'll be here available when it's overhead and um, We'll turn on the turn off the uh, unplug the trailer, turn on the inverter, and we will heat up a glass of water and see how many amps we can pull out of these uh, five panels. All right, once that's done, uh, I'll put this video together and we'll we'll be done. All right, so I'll do that tomorrow for you guys. Thanks. Hey, Tim Shepard again, the Digestion Podcast. We're gonna try to test out the. Go Power 500 watt uh, solar panel system with the MPPT controller. The old one was a PWM controller. Um, I wrote some notes here. So the PWM is a pulse width modulation. And basically, you wire all the panels in parallel, and those panels put out about 18 volts. Um, and then the PWM controller. It's a really inexpensive controller and it basically just brings that 18 volts down to about the 13 volts for your batteries and it pulses, pulse charges it like when it needs it. And um, those are normally 5.6, 100 watt panels, 5.6 amps. So when it does this pulse, it actually brings the voltage down. And when you bring the voltage down, the power actually goes down. So the efficiency of the PWM controller drops so you don't actually get the 100 watts out of the panel you might get 75 80 something like that um, the MPPT is multiple excuse me maximum power point tracking and with this controller you put all the panels in series which increases the voltage so like the voltage on my five panels the panels are putting about 19 volts each, so it's almost about 100 volts coming in DC. And um, when the batteries drop voltage, it um, as the power comes in, the MPPT controller can increase the current because it has all that voltage headroom to work with. So it can always increase or uh, decrease the current as the battery's charge rises or falls. Um, so you can get 20-30% more efficiency and you can approach the theoretical um, you know, 100 watts per panel or 500 watts for the system. So that's the difference between the two. If you can get an MPPT controller, um, that's the one to get. It's more efficient. So having said that, 
Let's go ahead and test. Um, I'll go over what I got going. Okay, so you can see I got the panel trailer and all this trailer put back together at the bed and everything. So here we have uh, the trimetric. Batteries are 13 volts. The trailer's unplugged. Essentially, I have the main breaker thrown. I got the inverter on, so I'm drawing current just from that thing running. And um, I got all the uh, lights on, the 12 volt lights. Some of the 110 lights are on the inverter circuit, um, just because of the way I broke the circuit up. Um, so, so you can see some of those are on also, which is fine because I want to test current draw. So I got all these lights on to pull the batteries down as much as possible. So we'll look at the trimetric and we'll see 13 volts. So we got eight amps coming in. That's good. That's plus nine amps coming in. Um, so it's charging the battery. So the battery, according to the trimetrics, at 94%. I probably need to reset this once it's charged up with the charge controller because this is based off the um, the converter from a long time ago. Okay, so we got 13 volts. So I'm going to leave this on current so we can see the difference because when you start. I'm going to run the microwave in a minute, which is on the GoPower 1500 watt inverter, and that'll really suck the power. Again, I have two 105 amp AGM batteries. So, in here is the display. Sorry about that. Here's the display. Um, so, you got 20 amps coming in now, which is pretty good. Can you see that or not? There. 20 amps coming in. It's 100% charged because this just goes based on the voltage of the battery. Um, so let's see what that'll do. Now this is low because I've already run the microwave two or three minutes before I did this test. So the batteries uh, actually came down a little bit. So we'll see what's going on. The, the reason you see a difference here um, is because the trailer itself is drawing 10 amps. The solar is putting in about 20. So you see the net difference is 10 actually going to the battery. So I got 10 amps now going into the battery from the solar. So that's why you see a difference on the two panels. One's the full coming in. This is the net going uh, in or out of the battery. Hence it's plus, 10 amps are going in. So we're gonna go ahead and run. Got a, a cup of water in here. I'm actually going to run it for, let's do three minutes. I don't know what that's going to happen to the water, but here we go. So this is going to draw like 150 amps from the batteries. It's like an 800 watt light. Okay, so yeah, we can see here the rise, rising up here, power. So the battery. So 146 amps. So let's see what the solar is doing because that's about what it takes without the solar. But I think the solar algorithm or something is interesting how it responds. So it says zero. So let's keep watching it and see what it does. Because I would expect this to jump up. So that fan is the inverter here kicking in. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a 2000 watt. And I think I tried a 1500 watt and it didn't quite work. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here we go. So the current's it's ramping up now. Interesting how it delays a little bit, or if it's just based on the battery. You can see the battery showing 50% with those two bars there. So now I got 7.3 amps coming in from the solar. It's funny because I had 20 before I even did anything. Which is fine. The system should put out about, I think, 20, 28 amps or something. 
It's interesting how it doesn't just shoot up to max, like I remember the other controller doing. And it's super bright day outside too. I like how it's back, backlit before. Before I used to have this little light, but it was still hard to make it out. Microwave just quit, so the fan just quit. Be interesting to see what it does. So let's go look at the why oh, that's thinking. Sorry about that. <sighs> okay, so we have zero current coming in, but it looks like it's, it's like looking and deciding. I wonder how that thing decides. So we're at 12.7 volts, 90%. Now the trimetric doesn't just go off battery voltage. It goes off calculated amounts of current that it watches going in and out. So it knows I have 110 amp hours of battery and it uses that and uh, the amount of current that goes in and out to calculate how much battery is left. So it's 12.7, so it looks like this thing should start kicking up and charging this thing. Again, I don't know how long that takes. Before I left and did some stuff and came back and it was at 20 amps. So I think I'll pause it here and uh, I will turn it for you guys, see what it does. Okay, here we are back, uh, literally just a minute <laughs> later. It jumped up so you can see I got almost 11 amps now coming in uh, and I have about 10 amps going out running everything else so let's go look at the charge controller there you go 20 amps So it's working. Pulling in 20 amps from the sun to put those batteries back up. So I'd say it's pretty working pretty good. Which is interesting about the charging algorithm. Why doesn't it just kick in? Um, I'm going to try while it's doing that. Kind of what we did already. I'm going to run this for a minute. Boil that water out of there. Okay, what's gonna happen? So this looks better. So it didn't jump to the 150. So let's go see. Okay. Putting out 21 amps. Now, I don't know if any of my panels are shaded. Might be from the air conditioner. I don't know that much, but still, that's pretty good. It's 22 amps. Okay. Yeah. Now we can cycle through here. 
Well, this button. So it still thinks 100% charged because again it goes off voltage. 13.4 volts, 20.2 amps coming in. So I'm wondering if the batteries are less than 100% according to this if it would try and put out that maximum. That's one thing I like to try. Like maybe I'll do it in the morning after it's been on all night and batteries might go at about 80% or so. Um, and then try it in the morning. So, okay. Again, everything is on in here and I'm still getting 11 amps battery charge. That's pretty good. So there you go. I'd say it's a success. Be sure and uh, check us out at thevap.com, T-H-E-V-A-P.com for our podcast. We'll also talk about the solar there. And, um, of course, you've already found the video. So take care. Thanks.